How's it going everyone? This is James from OP Poker. Today we got a session review from a member over on our Discord, Desera43. They play $3 spinning goes and uh, we got sent over a few games. So we're going to look through one right now. Uh, if you notice, they're using the new big blind feature. So if you see here, it says 25B rather than the usual 500 chips. Uh, if you want to use that, I would suggest it's pretty useful for spinning goes. Um, it's a lot easier to determine stack sizes and whatnot. So hopefully you'll understand it. If you don't quite understand it, uh, then come over to our Discord and ask how it works. Basically, it's just showing in big blind amounts how much we got. All right, so we're gonna press play on the video, see what we're playing for. Playing for $6. So first thing we should note is we're playing for $6, which is a 2x multiplier on the $3 stakes. This is uh, important because on these 2x multipliers, you're more likely to get players that want to gamble, that want to go all in and just spin again for a bigger price. Um, this happens a lot at the lower stakes. It still happens at the higher stakes as well. So pay attention to that. We've got two players here, Andre and Alex. Let's see how we go. Very first hand, we've got a six. If the button folds, we probably want to play. He does limp though, so we're going to over limp, I think. Um, there are two options. You can straight out jam because there's already two and a half big blinds in the pot that you wouldn't mind winning, or you can over limp. Um, I am generally the kind of person that is uh, going to be leading, leaning more to a jam, but in this very specific scenario, over -limp limping is probably better. Because as we just said, in a 2x multiplier, your opponents are more likely to want to be gambling and going on to the next spin. Probably don't want to get it all in with a6 against those kind of gambly type hands. I mean, if you see a9, you'll be really annoyed. So yeah, I, I like over limping here with a6, which is what we do. Good. And our opponent jams in the big blind and we have an easy fold, I think. Jams ace8, I like his jam. This call is complete WTF, <laughs> but uh, there you go. I mean, exactly what I was saying about 2x multiplier is much more likely to see the gambling. And there you go. <laughs> but yeah, I like the shove with ace eight. Um, it's even nicer than uh, ace six because he's on the big blind uh, and you didn't make an aggressive action. So it's even more likely that his ace is good. So I would shove any ace if he was in, if I was in his position, because it's a lot less likely that you're over limping uh, as a trap. All right, so we straight away heads up. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get money from that player. So now we gotta play some heads up. Let's see how it goes. Very first hand, we've been min raised four or five, I think is a little bit too weak. So I would be folding. Uh, main reason I would be folding is because People in position are generally more aggressive than what um, GTO or the solvers would uh, suggest. Now, if they're c-betting a lot, if they are barreling a, lo a lot more often, you don't want to be playing hands like this because it's much harder to realize your equity. However, if you're playing against a player pool that is very passive, so if they raise and then they don't c-bet that much, I do like the call with or five. I do believe, however, on these three dollar stakes for a two x multiplier, you will be up against too much aggression in the long run. So you're just going to end up uh, folding a lot. Uh, in this scenario, you check. He checks back, and you hit a pair on the turn. Now, I'm not sure what this bet is for. Is it for value against King High? I'm guessing that's what it is, but I don't like it at all. There are several reasons for that. Um, you are very capped in your range. You are, have a few few flush flushes, don't get me wrong, but a lot of the hands like ace-10, um, ace-7 suited, ace-5 suited might be raising against his uh, min race. You don't have pocket 10s, pocket 7s, etc. All these things that Alex could have. So I don't like the bet at all. I think I'd prefer to check and if they bet three big blinds or more, I would actually just check fold my four five. 
Anyway, we do make a min bet and we'll see what happens. We get called. River is awful. Uh, I don't like the fast check. I think the fast check is too... Too obvious for your opponent that you ha that that you don't have a hand that you really want to think about, so it's less likely you've got a hand like, uh, let's say you have, let's say Ace Eight off. It's less likely you've got a hand like that because you need to think about: Do I want to value bet on the river or not? So you're more weighted towards hands that just kind of want to give up and hands with weak showdown value and then occasional just nut flushes that you want to trap, um, which isn't good. I think he, the timing is a clear problem here. Um, our opponent has jack seven, which makes total sense on an ace, 10, seven board. So you just want to check back their bottom pair. So I like their play. We've got aces now, we make a min raise. I'm fine with min raising or limping. Now this is a nice spot you get jammed on. <laughs> with aces that is that is exactly what you want can you hold yes you can good good and now we are the chip leader um back in big blinds again uh, so i like the call with queen jack we're quite happy to play it post lock we're now very deep in a for a spin and go at least we are what 32 big blinds effective and we flop top pair good kicker um it's a little bit different to, let's say, your 15 big blinds deep effective because queen jack at 15 big blinds, you're really happy to get stacks in. Uh, at 32 big blinds, it gets a little bit more iffy. I don't, I don't think you really want to get all of your chips in. You definitely want to build the pot, but you probably don't want to put all of the chips in. So let's see how you play it. Um, I don't mind the check. And then on the turn... Uh, it's a very dry turn card. Um, we've seen him already check back weak showdown value on the flop. So I do like betting out yourself. Uh, you could also check raise. Check raising is a possibility. It's a very uh, dry board. It's unlikely that our opponent Alex has hit this two. So we might have a spot where he has a six or a nine and has decided, okay, I'm going to get some value here. So I don't mind the idea of check raising as well. So I would personally make it a little bit bigger. I'd make it three big blinds or even four big blinds um, because I think 6x and 9x will call three or four big blinds. Um, if you bet one big blind you might get the ace highest to call as well. Two big blinds might get the ace highest to call, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I think I prefer a little bit bigger bet. We get called, and the river is a seven. Um, not the best river in the world for us. If they, if we do bet and get raised, it's going to be a tough spot. But I still want to bet, definitely for value. Um, I like going for a smaller size, like we have the, there, 2.7 big blinds. I like that. Get snap folded, so it's quite likely, again, our opponent had weak showdown value. That called the turn and gave up on the river. I don't think they were drawing. All right, ace nine. I like raising against this player. With the ace nine. Um, we would be raise folding. I think. I think players aren't really free betting enough. Um, if you were playing very good regulars, then you do what you would have to raise and then call a shove but we have to hope well we have to hope that at the three dollar stakes you don't run into those that often i don't mind the c bet and take it down could check back ace nine i'm pretty indifferent either way eight nine um this is a hand that i wouldn't mind limping i think i'd prefer to limp because if you raise and you get shoved on um it's not ideal you just have to fold it and uh, this hand plays very well and you're quite happy to go to a spot where you have very large stack to pot ratios with the hand like this because you can hit very hard and uh, you have good playability you're in position you can pot control if you hit your eight or your nine 
if you hit a straight or a flush, you can build up the pot because you have the position. So I, I think I prefer limping this rather than raising. Uh, we raise, this flop comes out. I would see bet this, this board. We have a lot more uh, of these higher card values that raise from the button. So I like the bet, I like the bet size. We're just trying to get hands that haven't connected with this board at all to fold. So that's what we try and do. He's thinking. And we get the fold, great. Perfect. Okay, jack six. Uh, jack six against some players, you might want to use this kind of hand as a free bet. Um, I would start with a free bet here against Alex. I don't think they've been too gambly at all. I don't think so far they've been folding a lot. Um, and therefore I want to definitely have some free bet bluffs every now and again. So I'd make it uh, anything between five and seven big blinds, depending on what you do with your value. So yeah, I would make a raise. You fold, I think that's fine as well to fold. Uh, Ace five. Um, I guess you are raise folding that. Nice dry board that you go for a check back on these dry boards, queen free free. I'm personally of the type that will bet every single hand here. Um, obviously, ace high has got some showdown value. But if I bet and I get raised, most of the time, I'm going to be calling that to keep them honest. Um, so I'm, I'm not too worried about getting check raised with my ace five. I'm just going to bet absolutely everything. And then when they do check raise, I'm going to call them with good king highs, uh, ace highs, frees and queens and then things that have lots of backdoor draws let's say i had five four of spades or five four of clubs or five four of hearts things like that okay so we check back again so we check back the flop check back the turn and now we have river i would I think it's fine to check back the ace five, but I'll probably bet the stronger fives, ace five, um, but I, I don't mind checking back. Lots and lots of spots where you're indifferent in poker, and this is probably one of them. And on the river, um, I think you could go for a one big blind bet. They might, they might call with a, a five. Or they might turn their hand into a bluff. And then you call. Because uh, I don't think a king would very often play as a check to you on the river. But yeah, I, I don't mind going to show down with it. It's not a problem. Okay, we've got pocket fives. Would be just pushing it all in against the limp which is what we do, that's great. There's no need to want to go to a flop with this. You get lots of things that are flipping against you to fold if you just go all in. So let's say your opponent, for example, has seven, eight suited. If they limp and you shove, they're never gonna call you. So you've got you've won a big blind in a spot where you're actually flipping. Nine, five suited, I like a limp. That's what we do. Ace high board, I like to bet everything, just like Desera did there. I would bet absolutely everything, even the 5x. Just like the, that paired board, queen free free earlier. Play it the same way. Okay, queen two, we've hit middle pair, bottom kicker in a limped pot. Let's see, let's see how this runs out. We've been against a guy that's been quite passive so far. So I like the check call there. Um, another scary card has come out on the turn. Um, I presume we're going to be facing quite a bit of aggression. We don't know. Okay, I like to check the river. I don't want to bet one big blind. You're kind of, you're asking for trouble <laughs> with this bet. <laughs> you really are asking for trouble. Um, I think I would just check to him and then if they bet uh, two big blinds or less, I would call. And if they bet more, I would probably fold. So let's see what happens. I think this is just a bet that's asking for trouble. But we do take it down. Got aces again. I really would want to limp 
the aces here. That's what we do great. Um, you don't want to risk. Hey, we got aces again. Oh dear. Aces against pocket threes. This time we don't win. Now we're back to square one. Not much you can do about that. 7-3 fold, nice. Ace-king, I would min-raise. Go for a limp though. So we're trapping with our limp. Um, I think the kind of hands that I would prefer to trap would be ace-jack and ace-10 rather than ace-king. Um, those kind of hands is the ones that I'd limp trap with rather than ace-king. I like to build the pot with it. Um, it plays a lot easier. Yeah, I think I would just build the pot with the stronger, stronger ace type hands. Very, very dry board. So another board where I would bet pretty much any two cards. Unfortunately, the turn is pretty bad. Um, I actually don't mind checking back here because what are you trying to get value from with this bet? Uh, it's less likely our opponent has ace high because we have an ace ourselves. Against the seven, we're losing against kings. We have a king ourselves, so less likely. Against twos, are they going to call this secondary bet? Same with ace highs. I think I would just prefer to check back so we don't get ourselves in trouble. We do take it down though. Ace two, we call. Very wet board, so we just give up. Good. There are some boards dry boards where we want to call ace highs on the flop, but on a board like that, we have completely missed it. We don't even have backdoor flush draw or backdoor straight draws or whatever. So I do like the fold. 10-8, I like the raise. I think it's a good good hand to raise with. Um, on this board, 7-6 deuce. I, don't mind, I would suggest playing this as a bet and a check sometimes to mix up your strategy. Um, just so that you are protected when it comes uh, an 8, a 9, a 10, that you ha actually have something that hits that board. Because there are some people that just bet every kind of gut shot uh, or straight draw here. And those types of players you can really attack when uh, the turn comes out a 8, 9 or 10. So, I like to check back. Uh, and... Uh, I like the bet on the river. Um, I would probably bet a little bit bigger, but I'm fine with one big blind as well. You're trying to get value from a seven, six, or a deuce, really. So it has to be a small size. Seems like our opponent has been folding in every spot where he's having to decide what to do. Um, this will. Uh, this means that when you have a spot where you have a fairly strong hand and you get raised which will happen eventually. You can give up. You can fold against a player like this. It just seems like so far, he, all the opportunities he's had to call or raise, he's been erring on the side of caution. So I would err on the side of caution as well against him when he gives aggression. 5-4 offsuit against the limp. I don't mind raising. I think most of the time I'm going to raise a hand like this. Uh, so if he limps at this stack depth, I'd make it three big blinds, three and a half big blinds, somewhere in the region of that. Uh, as an ISO raise against his limp. We don't though, and we've flopped pretty well. Uh, this is a board that actually hits you pretty well. Uh, Alex M is going to probably be folding his very worst hands and a lot of his worst hands have a two or a three involved so you can lead out a bunch on boards like this um, I personally would lead out with 5-4 quite often it's quite an easy one to play um, especially as one of uh, one of your outs is an ace and one of the kinds of hands that will call the flop will be his ace highs and then you can you can easily get stacks when you actually hit that, which is quite useful. Right, they bet and you call. Um, 
I don't mind check calling, but I would also think about check raising just because you have lots of threes and lots of twos. I, I, I think I would prefer the check raise most definitely. When the six comes out, this is obviously very good for your checking and calling range. So I do like the lead out. I do like that it's a small sizing. There we get a fold. And blinds go up. Jack eight, I would limp most of the time. I don't mind an occasional raise, but if you're raising this um, all the time, you're raising too much. Okay, you're raising too much, I think. Overall, that's how you've been playing. I think you should be looking at a little bit more limps in your game. I like the half pot bet sizing on this board. You want to kind of protect the eight. So I do like that. Uh, turn card is amazingly good for you. So I don't mind the bet. Uh, I think against this player who's been very, very conservative, he's been folding a lot. I don't want to put on too much aggression against them. So far, every decision point that you've given them, they folded. So on a board like this, even though there are two flush draws and uh, potential straight draws available, I would bet on the smaller side I'm looking at two or three big blinds somewhere in that region gives him a good spot a uh, good amount of uh, fold equity if he wanted to shove he might look at it and go hmm well I've got a flush draw here don't really want to call that bet I'm just going to shove whereas this five big blind bet doesn't allow him to do that so yeah that's something I would play differently now he'll only want to shove the good flush draws. Um, Ace-4, you managed to get him to shove Ace-4, so that's nice. And we take it down. Great. Good stuff. Nice win. Um, so yeah. Overall, I think you were playing against a very weak opponent. Didn't seem to be playing back at you at all. Um, I think you had a few spots where you were calling too fast. I think maybe you're raising too much from the small blind. Um, and maybe you should pay a little bit more attention to what boards are good for you and what boards are good for your opponent. But other than that, I think you're going to be doing very well on these $3 limits. I think things will be uh, good for you and I can't wait to see you moving up to the $5 and $7 and beyond. Um, if you guys have any questions about this game, feel free to ask in the comments. If you guys would want to get involved yourself, maybe want to uh, be session reviewed yourself, come over to our Discord channel. So we've got a spin and go section. We've got a hand history section where we talk through hand histories. Uh, and we also have all of the resources to do with spinning goes. If you want to talk about other formats as well, we've got six plus hold on, we've got fusion, we've got general poker. Uh, it will let you know in the news and announcements section when we go live on Twitch as well. Um, great place to meet fellow minded spinning go players. So please come join us um, and let us know where you found us. Other than that, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already and like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you don't. And uh, please leave a comment if either way, if you liked the video or disliked it. Helps us know what you guys want and which you don't want. Anyway, thanks everyone for watching.